everybody. This is Molly Kay. I have a really important story for you. It came out, I think, yesterday. I'm not sure. I don't see it. I think it was two hours ago. So um, this story I got from MSNBC, but it is originally posted on the Washington Examiner. And it says the debt ceiling sets up major battle in Congress. This story is really important because anyone who receives any type of federal benefit, and a lot of times we don't really understand what types of federal dollars funnel through our states. And so, you know, this could devastate a lot of communities, a lot of poor people, uh, people who receive social security, disability, SSI, if you receive um, section A, if you receive food stamps, uh, because that comes from the administration of children and families from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, um, funds for, for social programs. Uh, if you receive a federal pension, if you receive a retirement, a thrift, you have a thrift savings plan, um, just all sorts of things they're going to be dipping into, cutting out, delaying to make sure they have money because they have given out of money. They're giving all this money to Ukraine. Uh, nations are de-dollarizing or de we're going through a global de-dollarization because people know our country is going belly up. And I talked last year about what happened in Greece, you know, maybe it's about 10 years ago. I'm not sure, but Greece went belly up and it was painful. I mean, those people were trying to get their money out of the bank. They, they were trying to do bank funds. The banks wouldn't open. They could get a little bit of money out of the bank each day. People couldn't pay their bills. People couldn't get medication for their families. The young people were essentially shut out of the job market and they had to leave the country to get jobs. Um, you have multi-generations of people having to move and live into one place just to make ends meet. Um, People had their salaries cut, pensions were cut. Like it was tough. And I don't know if you remember what happened in Detroit when Detroit went bankrupt. Like we are heading into a situation like we've never seen before. And the big com companies and corporations are already preparing. You see there's, you know, cutting the fat, laying off people. They've gone through their um, finances and expenses, decided where they were going to cut cost to remain marketable, e even in, you know, um, the grocery store industry and in, in retail, they're laying off and figuring out how to do more with less, putting less in stores, um, because now we're shopping less. So this whole thing is this Ponzi scheme called capitalism, called America, called democracy. It is falling apart quickly. And so I'm going to read this story to you and let you listen at how dire things are. U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen sent a letter to congressional leaders Thursday notifying them that the agency has begun taking extraordinary measures as the federal government bumps up against this debt limit of just over $31 trillion. That means Congress has until about June to raise the debt ceiling or potentially default on the U.S. debt obligations for the first time ever, which I will say a lot of countries are expecting us to default because they've positioned themselves to either not rely on us to be able to do business regardless of the sanctions they, that America and the West imposes on them. And because of this war, we've spent so much money and given away so much of our um, <clears throat> military supplies to this Ukraine war to fight a proxy war with Russia. And we don't have the infrastructure to replace anything because we don't manufacture anything, <clears throat> excuse me, anymore. So it is really, really, really becoming a challenge to hi, the emperor has no clothes. The emperor has no clothes and we need to really be paying attention to what's happening. First, I have determined that the reason of the statutory debt limit, I will 
be unable to fully invest portion of the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund, CSRDF, not immediately required to pay beneficiaries, and that a debt issuance suspension period will begin on Thursday, January 19th, and last through Monday, June the 5th, 2023, the letter said. I respectfully urge Congress to act promptly to protect the full faith and credit of the United States, she added. And so if you don't know Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund, that is the fund that pays the retirement pensions of people who have retired, who have worked for the federal government. And same for disability. If they work for the federal government and they were disabled on the job because of some accident, maybe they were federal law enforcement and they were shot or you know hurt on in the line of duty or while employed full time, they receive a pension. So those people are not going to get their money. And this says, I will be unable to fully invest the portion of the civil service retirement and disability fund. So if you're working and they, they are supposed to contribute, they're telling you they're not going to contribute their portion between Thursday and Monday, Thursday, June 19th which was yesterday and Monday, June 5th, 2023, which is in June. So for a period of a couple of months, people who are working are not gonna have, I'm sorry about all the noise, I'm sitting close to a window. But um, they're not gonna be able to um, have their their pension matched. And that's huge, you know, that that's the reason why a lot of people choose government employment because of the benefits. So if you don't if you don't have that benefit, that means they're going to be obligated or probably only able to pay the obligations that they have, but they're not required to pay anything beyond that. The Congressional Budget Office recently released budget figures showing that federal government showing that the federal government borrowed four billion per day in 2022 which is more than $10,000 per household and an overall deficit of one of about $1.4 trillion. Pre-pandemic deficits were less than a trillion dollars. So we are on the hook to pay $10,000 per day. Everybody that has a social security number owes this money and they say household, but it's really likely not household because, you know, they measure us by people, persons. That's why we have numbers. We're numbered. $10,000 per day. We don't make $10,000 per day. We're never going to be able to pay this money back. And so what you're going to find is like in Greece, you're going to go through austerity where like they're, we're going to not hardly have any money. They're going to go into the bank. They're going to take your money. They are going to um, cut whatever expenses, they're going to have huge layoffs. You're just going to just see this whole country just change in the blink of an eye. And so, you know, what I've been warning you about, you're starting to see happen. This has not happened before, not in my lifetime. So it's just interesting to watch. Lawmakers can raise the debt ceiling, but they were hardly able to agree on who should serve as the Speaker of the House raising serious questions about whether they can come together on this issue. Many want to use the opportunity to implement fiscal reforms, which is what I say. If you can't afford to pay your bills and you need to cut your expenses, we can't just keep printing money and acting like we don't have a problem. Because that's a problem. And because we are the ones that are on the hook for the debt, it's problematic for us. The debt the debate over our debt ceiling is the perfect example of Washington elites refusing to prioritize your best interest, said, Rick, said U.S. Senator Rick Scott of Florida, who stole billions, uh, uh, almost a billion dollars from Medicaid, Medicare, had some huge fraud case when, before he was the governor in Florida and basically got off scot-free, lives rich. Richie Rich in Naples, Florida. 
this is why this country is in the shape it's in because people elect criminals to represent them and then the criminals pray you forgot their criminality and then they tell you about the country being a criminal like we just run by uh, this whole country is just a criminal syndicate it's a big ponzi scheme and so many people have short-term memories these people can get away with murder literally and nobody remembers it so i'm not surprised that he would say this because most people who if you don't live in florida or haven't lived in florida you don't even know what kind of criminal he was before he became governor and before he became a u.s senator like even when he was a governor, he was a criminal. So people in Florida just gave him a promotion. And then those same rich and poor racist folks who um, think that they're getting something going to find out soon or forget that these are the same people that bankrupt the country and bankrupt them. So it's just people are stupid. And I'm sorry to say that, but the, the one thing that people should be learning in school is business, how business operates and how business and politics go together. Can't have one without the other, not in this country or not in the, re in the West, period. It's just a farce. Any two, I'm off my soapbox. We can't keep rubber stamping reckless spending, says the criminal who stole government money himself. I'm fighting every day to stop it, says the criminal who stole the money and got off. I'll put a link to, to the story about him in the description. Republicans also blasted the Biden administration and the recent omnibus spending bill. The White House said earlier this week, there will be no negotiations with Republicans on the debt limit. So if we ain't gonna have any negotiations, then this shit gonna fail. So y'all better be getting you some big bags of rice and beans and flour and seasoning so that you can make soup, learn how to get you some seeds and grow your own stuff, be trying to grow you some stuff inside of your house. Um, if you have a freezer, maybe try to stock it up with staples, figure out where your local farms are and um, farmers markets like y'all, it's about to go down. Just a few weeks ago, Joe Biden signed a 1.7 trillion spending monstrosity, said Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio, Republican. And now the White House says it will not negotiate with Republicans over the debt ceiling. They created the problem. No, all of y'all created the problem, criminals. Experts raised the alarm, arguing this, this need for yet another debt ceiling increase shows the current unsustainable trajectory of federal debt spending. Now, if you have a credit card and your credit card, you, you, you max it out and you're not making payments or you're just bare, making the bare minimum payment, your credit card company is not gonna give you an increase on your limit so you can go buy more stuff and barely make the, the minimum payment. You're never gonna pay it off. They're never gonna get their money back. You just got their stuff. Like this is this is the equivalent of what is going on now. It doesn't make any sense. You you can't live like that in your house. So how is it that the government can live this way? America will hit the thirty one trillion dollar debt ceiling today, said economic expert Stephen Moore. That's one hundred and twenty percent of our gross domestic products and $246,876 per taxpayer. How can anyone believe this is sustainable? That means over your lifetime, they're going to be looking for you to pay this $246,876. We don't make that kind of money. I don't make that money. You know how long it's going to take me to make that? And same for the average person after taxes, like we don't earn this type of money. There, there's no way they, don't, they won't pay us. I just did a story about how they outsource uh, work to Kenya and other third world countries or poor, poor countries, not third world, but to African and Indian countries, Asian countries. So they don't have to pay us a living wage. There's no way we're going to make this money 
to pay off these debts. And we don't make nothing anymore. This country doesn't make anything. So there's there's like no way we're going to be able to um, fix this. Maya McGinnis, president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, cautioned about the consequences of going too far with using the debt ceiling for political purposes. The debt ceiling is too important to turn into a game of chicken and default should never be suggested by those with a fiduciary responsibility to, to govern the nation. And I agree. Um, that's like if you are the, uh, on the board of a corporation or if you were ever, have ever sat on the board of a nonprofit organization, you're responsible for all the, the organization's finances. So if the director embezzles money or misspends money, the board of directors is responsible for that. Same for us as taxpayers, we're responsible for electing these reckless people to run this country in the ground. So we have to look at ourselves and ask, how did we get here? And why are, are these people so stupid? You know, it's like, are they a reflection of us or are we pawns in a game and we gonna lose? I don't really know. I think it's both. Politicians who are rightly worried about the nation's unsustainable borrowing path should take a hard stance against new borrowing and oppose legislation that would add to the debt ceiling while off while off the solutions to control the debt already on the books, rather than threatening not to pay the bills on borrowing that has already been incurred. So basically, you know, we don't really I, I don't know what the solution is. Um, you, you got to fix it, but it doesn't even really matter at this point because the other countries are going to make us go into default. So I, I say default is inevitable because our the dollar is no longer the um, thing that keeps us at the top. They've created bricks. Other countries are creating their own currencies. They're trading in gold and silver again. Their money is backed by gold and silver. Our dollar is the only money not backed by nothing. And the value of it is going down, which is why everything is so expensive now. So it's inevitable. So just prepare. McGinnis also argued that the debt problem is only going to get worse. The debt ceiling does offer the opportunity for all lawmakers to pause, assess the fiscal situation of the nation and take action as necessary. And it is necessary. The debt as a share of GDP is at near record levels, she said. We are on track to begin adding two trillion per year to the debt by the end of the decade. Interest payments are, are the fast growing part of the budget and are projected to start costing $1 trillion annually in only a few years. The Social Security and medical, Medicare Hospital Insurance Trust Funds are headed towards insolvency, which means there is not going to be any Social Security or Medicare. So if you have been paying into that, just imagine, you know, I started working when I was <clears throat> 14, 15 First little job cleaning hotel rooms at the Holiday Inn. And I had lied about my age to get that job. But even before, before I turned 18, I'd had a couple of jobs. I worked for Waffle House. I worked for Kentucky Fried Chicken. But, you know, you have to pay Social Security. You don't have a choice. They take that out of your check before you get it. Can you imagine being my age and having paid that money, having it withheld from your paycheck, and then you being told that it's you're not ever gonna get it. Like that's a slap in the face. I'm 50, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm 50, 51. You know, how, how, do you, how do you even allow this to happen? It's like, you know, that, that's why I just have so little respect and tolerance for politicians these days. I'm not telling anybody what to do. I'm just giving you my two cents. Like. It doesn't make any sense that we don't have any money. You've taken our money and you've misspent it. And then you're telling us that 
I made this promise to you. It's like they do to people in the military. They promise you something when you go in and then by the time you get out, if you stay in and retire, they, re, you know, renegotiate the commitment or promise that they made and they give you something else. It's le- always less than what, what they promised you when you went in. And I'm just tired. I'm really tired. Um, and last year alone, Congress and the president passed bipartisan legislation that added nearly $2 trillion to the projected national debt. And they did this um, because they have to set up for this new world order. So they incurred a lot of expenses, understanding that it was going to increase the debt. But they know they, they're not going to ever be able to pay this debt off. So, you know, anytime they have money in some kind of way and you can benefit from it, you need to use it to sustain yourself as best you can and prepare for the future because the day is coming. Like we are on the hook for all this debt, 200, almost $250,000 per taxpayer. How? people? There are people who work and will never be able to pay that money back. And then on the flip side, <clears throat> every every time, you know, we have an election cycle, national election cycle, they are giving tax breaks to rich people, to corporations, and they turn around and invest the money and give it back to shareholders, not create new jobs or give us pay raises. They give it to the shareholders. So this country is all about politicians taking care of businesses and businesses taking care of politicians. And us, we're just working slaves. You just work. They take this money out of your paycheck or you pay taxes at the end, you know, during tax time. And that's it. Most people lose, even, even if you get some money back. I mean, it, all they do is just have this system, rob Peter to pay Paul, rob Peter to pay Paul, rob Peter to pay Paul. It, it, it's crumbling. It's falling apart. And so I spent I expect, I don't know when it's going to happen, whatever. I'm just telling you that the cards are going to fall. You are going to be responsible for yourself because they're not going to have any programs available for you. They're telling you they're going to cut Social Security and disability and Medicare for old people. You think they're going to take care of young people who can go work? or family members who may have additional income and they may be getting some type of supplemental income, they're going to cut all this stuff out. They're going to cut off all these food stamps. They may give you a little something, but it's not going to be what they used to give you. Um, And then the way that they're screwing up the food, who knows what you're going to eat if they give you some free food. So... Y'all better start thinking about what you're planning on doing when this thing collapses and position yourself to be without for a period of time. It could be a week. It could be a month. It could be a couple of months. We don't know what is going to happen, but you should be prepared to sustain yourself with, you know, food and water, alternative ways to cook, um, you know, uh, be prepared for the elements. If you, you know, live paycheck to paycheck, you should have a plan for what happens if you don't get a paycheck. Um, understand what's going to happen to have a backup plan. Do you have family you can go live with? Do you, you know, can you afford a storage facility? Like, what is your plan? We all need to be thinking about what we're going to be doing and who we're going to, um, rely on when things get bad because our government is not going to be able to be there for us. They are helping Ukraine and busy fighting wars all over the world, trying to remain a superpower and they're not taking care of us at home and we're going to suffer. So with that said, please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content and I'm going to try to keep you abreast of what is going on. But these layoffs, this meeting in Davos this week. Then you got, we hit the debt ceiling. It's like the perfect storm. Uh, I'll also include in the description, the story about Rick Scott, how he stole all that money from Medicaid, 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 Medicare. Some, some, I can't remember if it's Medicaid or Medicare. Uh, 
think it was Medicare. But anyway, I'll I'll find the story and I'll include it and in how he got off. And I'll also include a couple of links about what happened in Greece when Greece defaulted and their economy collapsed. It was rough. It was rough for a long time. This is the end of this civilization. And so I will say this. You can engage in all these little petty debates. You can sit around on your phone and watch these people doing these dumbass TikTok dances. You can stick your head in the sand and act like nothing is happening. But this country is going through a gradual demolition. Your politicians are a part of it. Corporations are in on it. And you don't have anybody to help or protect you you are on your own so it doesn't matter if there's a natural disaster it doesn't matter if you don't have food it doesn't matter if it doesn't rain it they don't care if your groceries don't come to your local food your your local grocery stores because they don't really care about the supply chain they're even screwing with that food processors uh, and all this on top of living through two years, almost three years now of a pandemic, y'all people are going to snap when they wake up and find out that the emperor has no clothes. So you don't want to be those people who are out in the street looking for toilet paper, looking for cleaning products, looking for medicine and need it, um, you know, need groceries and can't find them. Start stocking up on non-perishable items, Things that you can barter with in the event you don't have any money because our money is going to be worthless and they're going to try to transition us to this digital currency. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't need, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I just know we're going to have chaos. And in this year, I expect a lot of chaos. So, you know, if you have elderly people who are relying on this money, you need to have a conversation with them and let them know that this is coming down the pipe because they're probably not paying attention. They don't really understand the significance of it, but um, things are going to start happening. And you're already starting to see it a little bit with the way the banks are not being able to taking money and then giving it back later like they're borrowing your money without your permission it's only going to get worse so prepare 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 for bad times this is molly k that is all i got please leave your comments or any thoughts any feedback you can provide any help you can provide for people who are living on fixed incomes um, relying on these resources and may need supports or advice on what they can do to make it or how they can try to stock up because at the end of the day you're on your own this government is not going to be able to take care of people and it's going to be the strongest and the smartest will survive this is an iq test people Show the folks that you're smarter than the average bear. All right, I'm out.